When you make travel videos, there are a few essential items you need to capture the best travel footage. The following are my 11 essential equipment items you need to raise your travel videos to the highest level possible. The camera. The camera you have is very important, but I would argue not the most important piece of equipment that you have. However, I wanted the best possible footage, so there were a few crucial features I needed in a camera body. I wanted my camera to be able to film 4K footage at 60 frames per second. That way I can slow down my footage and have it look amazing and not look jumpy and maintaining that high quality of 4K. The next thing I wanted in my camera body was the ability to maintain focus on the subject I am filming. That way when the subject moves, my subject doesn't go all blurry. This is why I got the Canon 1DX Mark II. Yes, it's a pretty expensive camera body and it is a little bit heavy, but my main concern is excellent footage. So that way I was able to film something 4K 60 frames per second and with this camera it follows the subject in focus. And if you aren't concerned about those things, then you can just go for a lighter camera. I used to use the Canon 5D Mark III and that is what I used to solely for my Ireland travel video. Like I said, it wasn't the most important piece of equipment, but if you are going for the best, it has a few qualities that can take your footage and make it the best. The camera lenses. More important than your camera is the lenses that you use to connect to that camera. Getting great bokeh or background blur will make a shot look more impressive than the camera can itself. In my videos, 90% of what I use is the 35 millimeter Sigma lens with an f-stop of 1.4. Why? First off, you need the f-stop at 1.4 so you can get a ton of background blur that always makes it, the footage look amazing. Also, the 35 millimeter is relatively a lightweight lens and its field of vision is close to our own field of vision, so it looks natural to us. So it can get a beautiful landscape, yet it also can get close up in an intimate shot. The downside is there's no zoom on this lens. So I also have a Tamron 70 to 200 millimeter lens with a 2.8 f-stop for all my close up shots from a distance. But this Sigma lens is very important if you want a naturally beautiful looking shot. DSLR camera gimbal. Here is footage of me without the gimbal and after is footage with the gimbal. No effects to stabilize either or destabilize either of this footage. The newest ultimate gimbal is the Ronin S to stabilize your footage. It makes everything so smooth and has a relatively low learning curve. I learned in the first day how to use this. And this is unlike most other stabilization modes. The battery on the Ronin S lasts a long time and does tons of tricks like gives you smooth panning. Also to this point, I have had trouble getting low footage. Low camera footage makes everything look big, tall, and impressive, which is very important for travel videos because it gives it that wow, that first time you've ever experienced this feeling. And this gimbal makes low footage simple and smooth. It makes all my footage smooth. It's a little heavy, but like I said, I only go for the best. GoPro. There is nothing better than getting action shots than using a GoPro. As long as you have a GoPro Hero 5 and up, you will get great video stabilization that they all offer to get that good action shot footage. Now it's also great is they offer that great stabilization at high frame rates. So you can slow it down without losing any quality, without getting any of that video jumpiness and increased stabilization. Obviously newer GoPros have more bells and whistles, but at least the Hero 5 for your GoPro. Drone. There are two great drones on the market, the Phantom or the Mavic. Having one of these is more important than which one of these. Any great travel video needs aerial footage to capture the landscape and to set the scene. You can't go wrong with either the Mavic or the Phantom. At the time when I purchased my drone, the Phantom 4 was the best, 
but I'm not so sure about that anymore. The Phantom 4 is big and bulky. Both the Phantom and the Mavic have a following mode and both are great image quality and both have a feature where it rotates around a subject. Those are the most important features. So why not get the one that is more compact? Slow-mo isn't that important for drones because you rarely slow your footage down. In fact, if anything, I speed up my drone footage because it naturally just looks a little too slow. So in my opinion, just make sure you get the Phantom or the Mavic. I would not do one of the older Mavics though, do one of the newer ones or get one of the Phantoms. Either way, a drone shot is essential and I recommend my Phantom 4 or the new Mavic Pros. Backpack. The backpack you get should always be based around the drone you have. I have this backpack, which is the Manfrotto, because it fits my drone's extra batteries, a laptop, and will even hold my big Canon 1DX if I fit it in right. It also will hold my Sigma lens and most everything that I use to shoot with. If you have a Mavic drone or no drone at all, I will link to another backpack that I recommend for Mavic users. But a good backpack is important for all the weight that you hold. It needs to have the straps to relieve the stress off your back for those long hikes and other things you'll be doing and yet still fit all your equipment for taking the great footage. The Low Pro Flipside 400 is a great backpack as well and I will link to everything that I talk about below. When searching for a tripod, I look at three main things. How tall they are, how small they fold, and what they use to latch their legs with. Some people want lightweight or other things and that's up to you but I wanted my tripod to extend really tall. When filming yourself higher up, the camera angle from higher looks better, and you never know when you'll want those extra inches too for that, that ultimate shot. Some tripods come with twist tightening latches, and these suck, because you can't tell when the legs are latched tight. And if you make that mistake once where you don't latch them tight enough, you break your camera, your lens. I like the clip latches, because I can tell when they're closed. Now, apart from a tripod, you're also gonna want a monopod. Just get a cheap one. I attach my camera to it for hikes because it will steady the camera when, and I can get a tiny slow pan from it as well. Phone cameras. Phone cameras have a lot of great qualities. One thing I found is they have great stabilization on the new ones. I have a Galaxy 9 and it's one of my favorites for certain shots. Like I was on a boat ride one time watching the lava spill over and I was trying to get it on one of my DSLR cameras, my 1DX, and I just couldn't get it that smooth. And luckily I brought my phone camera along and I was able to get some really stabilized, smooth lava footage. And everything looked beautiful and smooth, as you can see. Storage. I bring my computer and all my storage devices on all my trips to back everything up each night. You never know when you're gonna lose a card or a camera, and so it's just best to have it all backed up, and you will be super frustrated if you lose all your footage from even just a day on your trip. Also, I like to really go for amazing shots, and sometimes I risk losing my camera, especially my drone. I always risk my drone for a great shot, and maybe that's because I secretly want the Mavic, but I also want all that footage always backed up on storage, and that way I feel less conflicted when I'm risking my drone for that great shot. So also on top of that, I get a one terabyte card for my camera. That way I don't have to always switch cards when I run out of memory on the card. I always know where the card is going to be that way. It's either gonna be in my camera or in my card reader so I don't lose it. Plus, you will love the one terabyte with the Canon 1DX at 4K and 60 frames per second because it will eat up data actually pretty fast because that footage is high quality and takes up a lot of memory. Extra batteries. There's nothing worse than running out of batteries while you're on a shoot. With the 1DX, I have three batteries and that's pretty good. Other cameras I used, I would go through like four or five batteries a day on my vacation always have extra batteries for every device that you have, your drone, your GoPro, your camera, everything. And that's important because it seems that that money shot always comes right when you run out of batteries. I also have chargers galore. 
if, <laughs> if you see my hotels and Airbnbs at night, you would just laugh. We are moving beds, unplugging lights and alarm clocks to occupy almost every outlet. So we are charging everything every night. And then I'm also backing up all my cars. And so it looks funny, our, our hotel rooms. Maybe I'm just paranoid. I get enough chargers so that I can plug all my batteries in and I just fall asleep. And that way I don't have to worry about changing them throughout the night. Now, as part of that, you need enough adapters for outlets if you're gonna be traveling to other countries because you never know what kind of outlets they're going to have. So make sure you have the chargers and the right outlets for all of your batteries to charge in one sitting in one night. So your GoPro mounting kit. There are tons of cheap kits that will give you everything you need, but the kit I bought for my GoPro holders has chest straps, head straps, a window connection, connections for other random things. And this is important for when you need to use both hands when you're climbing something or when you're swimming or when you're on an elephant if you have the right mountings for your GoPro you don't have to worry about getting footage just turn it on and go the one I will link to is pretty cheap now most of my underwater footage is on my GoPro as well now I have goggles that have a GoPro mount and I also have a snorkel and I like the snorkel a little bit better because I can see what I'm filming but if that's annoying for you, then you can just use the goggle mount as well. Now, sometimes I use my 1DX underwater and I also bought a DSLR uh, waterproof bag. And so if you use this, I haven't used it on a trip yet because I'm going to use it on my next trip. But the 1DX will even fit in this water case, waterproof case and it's pretty big and it will give you crazy underwater footage. For your ease, I linked everything I used for my travel equipment below in the description box. If you can help support the channel and click on the links if you're going to buy any of these as I make a small commission when you do. Also, I'll put other products I didn't mention down there below like my microphone I use for getting good vlogging volume and quality that's pretty inexpensive. You're probably gonna have some questions about some of this equipment that I use Go ahead and write those in the comments and I will answer those and like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next travel video.